Good morning, everyone. It's pretty cold this morning. I it took a while getting out of my truck, and uh, now I'm just having a coffee, and I thought I would take this minute to tell you a little bit about my winter camping setup. There's not a lot of snow on the ground right now here, but it's uh, mid-December, and the temperature's really dropped. It was down to minus 13 last night. So I just want to discuss, and I'll show you what my winter camping setup is. Um, it's not uncommon for me to deal with minus 20 degrees Celsius weather on my adventures in the winter time and um, you know I'll talk about some safety and just some of the common sense things that I have um, some heaters and what I do to sleep comfortably in the back of my pickup truck and if you haven't uh, watched any of my videos already I sleep in the back of a uh, my 2012 F-150 it's a super crew with a five and a half foot bed I'm six foot two, so what I did uh, last year was build this um, basically two foot extension, and it's made out of cedar and plywood sandwiched between or um, st styrofoam for insulation in between it. I have some videos that I describe and I show in detail how I built it. I'm not a carpenter, so it's uh, not something you should be intimidated by if it's something that you I think you'd be interested in. I've got a lot of comments of people who have full-size trucks that thought, you know what, this is a perfect solution. Um, I mean, let's face it, F-150 is the, you know, probably the most popular selling vehicle in the world. A lot of them are the four doors. I have it because I have a family. I've uh, literally had one uh, since 2001 when they first came out. So this is my second, I like white, so it's my second uh, white Lariat Super Crew. And uh, yeah, I didn't want to trade it in. I love my truck, um, so I could have just traded in and got a longer bed pickup truck, but I thought I'd give this a try and it's worked out really well. Um, there's a lot of pros to it, um, so if you watch this video, you might uh, be convinced if you have a short bed pickup truck that you can uh, sleep comfortably in it. And uh, it's kind of slick how it works, if I say so myself. So uh, behind me is my Mr. Buddy heater. And um, I just got that on right now just to take the chill out as I'm working around the back here. I'll get into um, that. And I have a little electric heater here. This one here, uh, Thermosphere. And I have my Jackery back there and I'll get into all that in a minute. But I just wanted to tell you this video is just going to be about my whole winter camping setup. How to do it safely, how to do it efficiently. And then, uh, you know, your life's at stake at times, right? So it's just some common sense rules that I think I can share with you. So the big difference I find with winter camping in the back of a pickup truck compared to just summertime camping is that obviously you got to maintain your heat and how are you going to do that? My first recommendation is just get a warm sleeping bag. I have a lot of um, backpacking sleeping bags that need to compress down really tight for um, hiking. But when you have a truck, I mean, you can have a big kind of bulky sleeping bag. The one I have here is 30 years old, but it's a synthetic insulation mummy bag that I bought um, obviously years ago. And it's uh, still warm today. I mean, it's so old that the actual tag is worn off, but I believe it was a minus 10 or minus 15 Celsius mummy bag. So it's always been warm. I've never been cold in it. But even on top of that, I still bring a rectangle um, zero degrees Celsius bag to throw over top of that if I even needed it, which uh, I haven't to this point. Another thing with winter camping, in addition to your nice warm sleeping bag, is uh, I would get away from the air mattress. I have a six inch memory foam mattress that provides a lot of insulation, helps keep you that much warmer. So my mattress sits on top of this uh, solid core foam padding that I installed in the back of my truck, um, mainly for padding when I'm crawling around in the back of my truck. Um, it was just easier on my knees. And then that's on three quarter inch plywood, which then sits on top of the um, uh, liner, uh, the plastic uh, bed liner and then obviously the bed. So there's plenty of insulation there. If you are sleeping on an air mattress and you're wondering why you're cold, uh, unless your air mattress has uh, an R value of padding, like my backpacking air mattresses have actual insulation in them. So it keeps you warmer when you're lying on the ground. Um, but if you're in your truck and you, you think you have a, you know, an eight inch air mattress and you know, that's gonna actually get you colder than um, if you're sleeping on a foam uh, pad. So I'm not comfortable sleeping with a heater running in the middle of the night, so I prefer just to sleep in my sleeping bag. When I wake up, 
I can flip on a heater. And I have two heaters. So I have a Mr. Heater, it's a portable one that runs on propane. So my Mr. Heater, I decided to attach it to the wall of my camper extension. There's a lot of things I like about that. One is when I have my mattress, I have a six inch memory foam mattress and when I have it pulled back all the way, it's up, um, it's two thirds on the ground right now and the other third is kind of in a sofa mode. So I can lean back and work on my laptop and that sort of thing. But when a mattress does come back, it comes back to about here and the mattress is under here. Even though it has a grill, um, it does get really hot so you don't want anything coming close to that. So when the mattress comes down, the mattress height is still below the Mr. Heater. So to me, that's a, a safety thing. Again, I never really run the heater while I'm sleeping. Can't stress that enough. Um, you can if you have the appropriate setup. In my situation, it's such a close quarters. Even though it's technically supposed to be safe with no sort of fumes emitted or carbon monoxide, that sort of thing, um, I don't run it overnight while I'm sleeping. I just simply have a warm enough sleeping bag and I don't run any heating system in the middle of the night. I have a carbon monoxide detector in the back of my truck with me. So when I do turn it on, usually kind of at night when I am uh, maybe uh, just working on my laptop and I'm not ready to go to bed yet and get the chill out, I'll run it then. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'm in my mummy bag, I'm covered up, I'm nice and warm, but it's time to get dressed and that sort of thing. I reach over, I'll turn it on, it heats the inside of my truck up very nicely and then I can get out and everything else. I also have a little fan up there to circulate the air while I'm in there. Because it creates so much heat, I can have a cross vent system going where I can have uh, the front window opened up and one of the side windows open up and I have that little portable fan that I run and uh, it'll circulate air, it'll bring fresh air in in case there's any sort of uh, concerns about fumes. So the portable Mr. Heater will run on this one pound propane tank. When it expires, it's going to be covered in frost and I let it run out all the way. So the way I have it set up here, I can just unscrew it. And you see how it uh, frosts up when it's empty. And I can just put a replacement canister in there without uh, taking it off. And there we go, the primer. You see the light, the pilot light comes on. Put it on high. And there you go. The tip over switches on the Mr. Heaters are really sensitive. So if you just wanted to leave it uh, on a shelf or loose kind of in your camper or van or whatever your truck or whatever you're using, you could do that. Um, I have tested it and it's very, very sensitive. So if it does tip over, you know, for safety, it's going to shut off. And I have a small thermosphere electric heater that I also keep with me. And the pros and cons of both are as follows. So the portable Mr. Heater runs on propane, which I can have um, several canisters handy. So that's convenient. It heats up substantially. So it's a radiant heater and you really feel the heat instantly. It has two settings, um, but it more than heats up the back of the truck very quickly. So as far as heating goes, you can't beat it. It really heats the back of my truck up very nicely. So the drawback with the portable Mr. Heater is fumes. Even though it's safe for inside use, are you going to risk your life on the one chance that there's a leak of some fumes or carbon monoxide and you simply don't wake up in the morning, right? So I'm not comfortable with that. I do carry a carbon monoxide detector in the back of my truck. Just for that reason, I carry two actually, but I still don't trust it. I'll use it just to kick on in the middle in the morning to uh, warm up the back of the truck. And again, I'll be in and out with the doors open, that sort of thing. I do like it when I'm working on the tailgate area of my truck, getting breakfast or preparing food. I run it and it kind of keeps that area nice and warm. I can use it to warm up some of my clothing, my waders and my um, wading boots that freeze solid in uh, the middle of the night overnight. The electric heater, uh, works fantastic. It uh, heats up nicely. It doesn't heat up as much as the Mr. Heater does, but it does heat up the back of the truck. Um, even last night, minus 13 degrees Celsius. It takes a little bit longer, but it does heat up the back of the truck where I can get it on my sleep bag and just be in my long underwear. So that part's nice. 
The only drawback to the electric heater is it requires a lot of electricity. It draws about 12 or 1300 watts an hour, which is a ton. So I have my Jackery with me, and my Jackery is a 1000 watt hour um, portable power station, which is great. I mean, uh, normally that's all I would ever need for any trip. But if I want to run an electric heater, um, if you do the math, it's less than one hour of runtime on a fully charged Jackery without charging anything else. So it's really not practical. I can run it again, just to heat up the back of the truck um, for 10, 15 minutes and it does its job that way, but it will draw a lot of power. So you have to consider if you're getting ready to uh, drive somewhere in the morning, you're gonna be able to charge up your Jackery while you're driving. And that's great, but if you're gonna be stationary for a while, you're not gonna be running your vehicle to charge up your Jackery, you have no electricity, um, it's something to consider. In the middle of the winter time, solar panels, I have my Solar Saga um, solar panels with me. However, they're limited in the winter time, especially here in Canada. So those are the two heating systems. I like to bring both if I can. It's nice to have options if you hit a um, provincial park here in Canada where there's some electricity you can pull into uh, you can run the electric heater um, from with an extension cord that I carry with me too so that's always an option and winter camping batteries just get drained so quickly so I do like having my Jackery with me because uh, GoPro batteries don't last long I know they use them in ski videos all the time but man I do not have a lot of luck with those things staying charged when it's cold my laptop it can be fully charged and if I open it up like last night it was fully charged when I brought it on the trip last night I opened it up said fully charged and then instantly it was dead so I had to charge it up with a Jackery so the Jackery is just so handy to have especially filming my adventures the way I do I get a lot of questions about the camper extension especially what I use to uh, kind of basically fill in the gaps between the extension itself and the opening in the tailgate and it fits pretty snug except that uh, around the top and the sides I just basically use some uh, sheets, some black sheets that uh, I keep in a little bag, keep them dry, and I tuck them in there once I pull out the extension, and it works great. It really blocks any drafts. Never had any issues with it. Occasionally it'll get damp, that sort of thing, but I've never had any water creak into the back of the truck. The camper extension itself is uh, insulated with styrofoam, about an inch and a half of styrofoam inside the uh, panels. So it actually kind of retains heat very well. The gap in the doors is um, pretty protected with weather stripping, so they shut pretty tight and there's no real draft that gets through there. Last night was pretty windy. So with my setup, I keep most of my gear on the top of my truck. I have a Thule storage rack that I carry bulky, loose items, um, lighter items. I try not to load up the top of my truck with heavy gear. I have a small little toolbox that I keep axes and that sort of thing in. And I have a, a rack up there where I can carry firewood and extra bulky items if I need it. By carrying all of my gear on the roof of my truck, I open up the back to be a little more comfortable, um, relaxing area. And especially in the winter time when I'm camping and it's dark by 5.30, um, you can only sit by the campfire so long when it's minus 15 Celsius outside. So I can retreat into the back of my truck and be warm, but yet be comfortable. I can sit up like I have it set up like a sofa almost, and I can work on my laptop and do some video editing before uh, it's time for bed, which Usually when I'm doing these trips, I'm exhausted anyways. But um, I like that system compared to, um, a lot of people put uh, these pull-out drawers and stuff and you really lose a lot of uh, vertical room. So you're basically just crawling in and um, I think a lot of those setups you can't really even sit up, right? So um, this one works really well for me. It's a great summer and winter camping setup. So hope you got something from this video. If you did, I really appreciate it. If you gave it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already done so, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I'm doing videos like this all the time, and uh, the pickup truck adventures are just starting out. Thanks. Cheers.